Hi guys, it's John here with a benchmark comparison between the S22 Ultra and the S23 Ultra. So I have the Exynos 2200 here, we've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and we've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 here. So what we're going to do is run through a Geekbench test, we're going to go on to Antutu after that, and then 3 Mark. then we'll compare the results and see how they both do, and hopefully you'll be able to work out whether or not it's worth the upgrade, and obviously whether it's worth your hard-earned money or not. So you can see here we're running Geekbench 6, so let's run the benchmark and see how they all do. You can see here at the start of the video, we have obviously 100% charge on all phones. The Exynos is at 23 degrees and the other two are currently 22 and 21 respectively. But yeah, I'll let this run now and we'll come back to the result and see how they do. Okay then, so in the first test we can see here that the S22 Ultras have obviously done a bit worse than the S23, single core of 1616 for the Exynos 2200, 1724 for the 8 Gen 1, and 2026 for the 8 Gen 2. Now interestingly, the multi-core score is still better here on the Exynos compared to the 8 Gen 1, but it is lacking in comparison to the 8 Gen 2. So we'll run this test a couple more times just to get a sort of feel for an average score, and then we'll move on to the compute test. Okay, so that's test two done, and we can see that there's been a bit of a drop here on all three. Temperature's going up to 30, 30, and 28. So the 8 Gen 2 is still pretty cool in comparison. Obviously, the scores are dipping slightly with the single core there. So let's run one more test and see how they do there. We do, of course, have the Thermal Guardians installed with a plus two still on all CPUs, so they should be able to uh, get as hot as possible, hopefully. Battery life, we can see 96 for both of the S22s and 98 for the S23. Right, so we can see another slight reduction here across the range, but I'll put the averages on the screen and you can compare at your leisure. But anyway, let's move on to the compute test now. We can see temperature-wise, we have a 33, 32, and 31. So let's see how they get affected with a compute test. Right, so the first compute test is done and we've got a really good score here from the Exynos 2200. We know that the compute score has always been better than the 8 Gen 1. This is quite uh, poor in comparison when you compare the 8 Gen 1 to the 8 Gen 2 here. Almost twice as good in its compute score compared to its older brother here, the 8 Gen 1. So it's really amazing the difference here between the 8 Gen 1 and the 8 Gen 2. The difference between the Exynos and the 8 Gen 2 isn't huge when it comes to compute but it is still substantially better on the 8 Gen 2. So I'm gonna run this test again two more times and then we'll get the average score. Temperature wise, we can see here 32, 32 and 29. So again, the 8 Gen 2 is still performing very well and keeping nice and cool. Okay, so there we are for the compute test and yeah, still very impressed there with the 2200. 8 Gen 1 as poor as ever but the 8 Gen 2 is doing really very, very well. Look at the temperature there, it's just 29 degrees compared to 34 and 33. So yeah, the 8 Gen 2 is really a fantastic CPU when it comes to the Geekbench results. Okay, so we're gonna carry on now and start with the Antutu benchmark. Now I haven't run a benchmark on the S23 yet, so it's gonna be interesting to see how it compares. Okay, so after our first test here, we can see that the 8 Gen 2 is miles ahead of the competition here with nearly 1.25 million points here in the benchmark results, followed by the 8 Gen 1 here with 898,000 and pretty close here for the Exynos 2200 with 882,000. Okay, so here we go with test number two. So there we are, after three Antutu benchmarks, we can see here the final results and the S22 with this 8 Gen 2, not going below 1.2 million. 8 Gen 1 has actually gone down a bit, down to 837,000, and the Exynos is still at around 843,000. So 8 Gen 1 is 38 versus the 8 Gen 2 at 35 degrees. 
and the Exynos is at 37 degrees. So not too much in it, to be honest, between the old S22s, but a substantial increase here on the HN2 itself. We can see here overall just CPU, GPU massively improved here compared to the HN1 and the memory as well also much better, much faster than the HN1 in the S22. So yeah, overall a much better experience there for the HN2. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is run one 30 minute test here on the stress test, see how they all compare. Battery wise, at the moment we can see that the two S22s are 76% and the S23 is currently at 82%. But let's do this 30 minute test and we'll come back and see the final results after. Wow, okay, so the Antutu stress test is finished and yeah, some really impressive results here from the HN2. You compare this to the S22, Exynos and HN1, you can see that the CPU performance is hovering around 80% for most of the test. Compare that to the HN1, we're getting around 70, just below 80% for the whole of the test. But the other thing to note here is that the core speeds are wildly different. You can see here that Core 7 peaks just under 3 GHz at the start of the test, but then it goes, stays around the sort of 2.2 to 2.6 GHz throughout the test. But here, Core 7 is almost locked at what must be about 3.4 GHz here. That's some really impressive stuff here. Exynos is doing not too bad, to be fair, apart from this dip here, which is a bit sad. It's actually done pretty well, hovering around 2.2 to 2.4 GHz, Core 7 there for most of the test. Very similar style to the Snapdragon HN1. Performance wise as well, arguably for the first sort of 20 minutes of the stress test, it's performing probably a bit better than the Snapdragon, but then you do have this massive dip here down to 40% where it ranks back up to about 60 and back up to what it was doing before at around 80% performance. So yeah, no question about it, the HN2, massive improvement over the HN1 and of course over the Exos 2200. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the wildlife test now. We're gonna do the extreme test on all three obviously, see how they do and then we'll move on to the slingshot test afterwards. Okay then, so the wildlife extreme stress test is finished and you can probably see there from the screen on the HN2, it was a lot smoother overall and you can see obviously in the results that the lowest loop score that it achieved is actually better than the best loop on the S22, both the Exynos and the HN1. Including the fact it is more stable at these higher speeds means that this really is a beast of a phone. You can see here the comparatively abysmal results here from the S22, and you can see through each loop the score getting slightly lower here on the Exynos 2200, same on the HN1. And starting at three nine, sorry, starting at three seven nine six, going down to about three thousand at the end of the twentieth loop. So yeah, really good results there for the HN two on the one of extreme stress test. Temperature wise, it actually this is the first time I've seen it get hotter than the S twenty two. So you can see here forty degrees compared to thirty nine. So that's an interesting one there with the heat. But forty degrees, it does feel warm. The top of the phones do feel warm. I'd say that the, the HN1 feels slightly warmer than the HN2 here, and the cooler one is the Exynos, but obviously the system temperature is a degree higher on the HN2. Anyway, let's move on to the Slingshot Extreme Test and see how they cope with that. Okay there, so unsurprisingly we're maxed out on all three and the difference is quite uh, outstanding here. Now the 8 Gen 2 here and its graphics scores, it gets 107 versus 64 on the 8 Gen 1 and 66 on the Exynos 2200. And then on the second graphics test we get 66 frames per second versus 37 versus 32. So massive improvement there for the 8 Gen 2. So physics scores as well, much better in all areas here. So we've got 80 FPS versus 77 versus 71. We've got 62 versus 40 versus 39. We've got 32 versus 21 versus 23. So yeah, really impressive scores here 
from the 8 Gen 2. So in every single area, the 8 Gen 2 is better than the Exynos 2200 and the 8 Gen 1 on the S22 Ultra. So if you are looking to get one of these for performance, the S23 is definitely the way to go. So if you're not too worried about performance in games, you could still go for the S22. The Exynos 2200 does last a bit better with battery life and is pretty quick off the mark. You can see here 45% battery left compared to the 8 Gen 1's 43. The 8 Gen 1 is still better at gaming than the Exynos 2200, but overall, if you can and you've been waiting, then the S23 is the one to go for. So let me know what scores you're getting in the comments below. It's always interesting to compare and see how you're doing with your phones in case I get a dodgy uh, CPU in one of my phones. These are all running the January update still. So we've got Android 5.0 here and we've got Android 5.1 here. The Exynos does have the 5.1 update ready, as you can see, ready to install but the 8 Gen 1 does not currently have it yet, so I'm just waiting for that before I update them. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.